wagon. It's here a day early. Those prison wagons are inhuman. Not even animals should be transported in them. There's a man I've been trying to keep out of that one, Emily. Now, if you'll forgive me, I'd like to go take care of it now. I can go with you, Samuel. Well, I'd rather you wouldn't, Emily. Those uh, prison guards are a pretty rough breed. I won't be very long. Hear that music we came into town? That's just about as close to heaven as you're ever gonna get. I couldn't disagree with you more. Mr. Talman, the prison wagon wasn't due here until tomorrow. I cannot possibly hear our motion for a new trial until then. Now, you don't really believe that one day is going to make any difference to Guthrie Amber, do you? What I believe is not relevant. Every man is entitled to his full day in court. Well, the last I heard he'd had it. He was found guilty for three murders. Deputy? Sorry, Mr. Fancher. The court gave me its orders. I've got to carry them out. Here's the transfer of favor custodial release. Sign it. I'll turn Amber over to you. I'll say this for you, Mr. Fancher. You sure give your clients their money's worth. Due process of law is the right of every citizen. As long as you arrest them, I'll defend them. talk to you? I, I'm sorry if I frightened you. There's nothing to be scared of. Ain't no way anybody in here can hurt you. Was there something you wanted? There sure is, ma'am. We're in, we're in awful need of a drop or two of water. Was wondering maybe if you could help us. Well, I can certainly tell the guards for you. You just be wasting your breath, ma'am. We've been begging them for water since noon yesterday. They just been laughing at us. Oh, that's horrible. Yes, ma'am. Man, we'd, we'd surely consider it an act of charity if you'd fill this first at the horse trial. Wouldn't be much, but it's so terrible hot in here, you might surely and truly be saving a life or two. Please, ma'am. Please. I'm afraid it doesn't hold very much. Oh, it's a lifesaver, ma'am. If you can just curl the brim so as I can get it through the bar. Hey, what are you doing to her? Let go of her. Let go. Let her go. Help, somebody help. Help, somebody help. Mr. Carwright, they've got Mrs. Fancher. Help, help. That's close enough, friend. If you want to see her live. Mr. Carr. Who's in the wagon? There's five. All headed for the hangman's noose. That's far enough, Tallman. Let him go, Doyle. Not unless you can give me a good wife or 
I'm telling you, Doyle. Let them loose. Or we're coming in there after you. Come ahead. But just be careful where you step. The bodies could be in your way. He means it, Tolman. What are we gonna do? What do you want to let him go? We want out. And right now. It's too much to ask. You got 30 seconds to change that, and we start breaking some necks. He's bluffing, Ben. Don't you bet on that. No. Rui, you keep out of this. We can't have killers running around town loose. Can't have them murdered in cold blood, either. He wouldn't dare do it. I tell you, he's bluffing you. Time's running out. Now, would you call that bluffing if that was your wife being held up against a wagon? That's not the point. That is the point. Open that wagon. I got no legal right to do it. Those are condemned killers in there. Enough, He's up on that board. There'll be no more trouble. He's up. All right. There you are. Now, see to it. You can start by rounding up every gun in sight and get us the best six horses in town. All right, you'll get them. But we've got to get her to the doctor. Take her. Now get us out of here. The next time we won't be so gentle. Hurry up with them leg eyes. Take the law, man, and get Guthrie Amber out of the lockup. Admiral, take this kid. It's all right. We've done what you wanted. Let the boy go. Hold it, Sandra, hold it. Is this your brat? Yes. What's your name? Cartwright. Ponderosa? Yes, that's right. Now, please, leave the boy alone. You got a pretty good stake in this. Only one way to keep it alive. Come with us. <laughs> no! Put him no. in the wagon. No, Mr. Cartwright. <coughs> Hang on to him, Central. Any trouble out here, you know what to do with it. Doyle, if any, if anything happens to that boy, you'll answer to me. Yeah. That could be interesting. Should that come to pass? Centro, hang on to the kid while I see what's up. Sergeants, what's going on in there? Hey, Doyle, thought I'd be riding out with you, but not this time. What happened in there, Amber? Not long, man. He didn't like the way I looked at this rifle. Oh. Well, pull that wagon out in the street and head it west. Good as done. Suggins, keep an eye on these two. <laughs> All right, folks. We got one last chore to do. Then we'll leave you gospel-spouting hypocrites to your just dessert. Same. Go round up the horses, bring them out here in the street. Yo, step out here. Step out. My son, what do you want him for? Shut up. Step out. Leave her alone.
Yeah. Not with the rest. You, out! You had better do as he says, my son. All right, move it back. Move it back! All right, get him in a wagon. Déjeme, Ricardo. Por favor. Town. Those hostages in there are going to guarantee that we safely do it. Now, if anybody tries to stop us, keep us from going where we're going, going to find our trail mighty easy to follow. But you ain't going to like what you find marking it. All right, boys, mount up. Remember what I said, Doyle? I remember. You better just pray I don't get a chance to enjoy. All right, move on! Heard what Doyle said. I just heard Mr. Cartwright. You want me to join the posse? No. Once a little Joe at the number two line shack, right out, tell him to meet me at the Western Trail. Right away, Mr. Cartwright. Clem, isn't it about time you start swearing in a posse? Sure. Every man in Virginia City's aching to be a part of it. Why not? You saw what happened to Emily. Do you want that or worse to happen to those kids in that prison wagon? Well, we can't just stand around here doing nothing. Clem, you're not fit to ride. Now, give Groton and me a dozen good men, and we'll go after him. No. Clem, that wagon and them prisoners is my responsibility. Yes, and if you'd lived up to that responsibility, that wagon would have been guarded, and none of this would have happened. Now, you know that. Look, mister. Now, just because that Mrs. Fancher didn't know any better than... Tell us. Bickering about who's responsible for what isn't going to get us anywhere. What's holding up the posse? Sam, how's Emily? She's going to die. I'm sorry. I asked you about the posse. Sam, I'm against the idea. What are you going to do, just sit there and do nothing? Well, Sam, I think it's Clem's idea, and I, I agree with him. If Doyle sees a large posse coming after him, he just might get it into his head to kill those four kids. You're going to have to pay that price anyway. Well, all I know is that we sure can't send 12 men after Doyle. Well, then who's going to do the job? Those of us have the most to lose. I want to go. Count me in. Tobias? I'm not a man of violence, but yes, I want to go. And with me, that makes four. Five. Or don't you think I have a stake in this affair? Five.
I thought you'd bring more men, Paul. No horse, not with them holding four children hostages. Even the five of you couldn't get within a mile of them without being spotted. Why don't you let a horse and I track them alone? That's why I sent for you. They're heading westerly. We'll meet you at the Ponderosa. I'll go with your sons. They go alone, Sam. I thought we were all going to ride together. You don't expect me to stay at the Ponderosa without going after them. Sam, you'll stay with us. This is where we're gonna hole up, man. What for? Ain't you tired of running? Yeah, but I ain't tired of living. We ought to get rid of these kids and get out of this territory as fast as we can. You can, not without money. Not with every badge within 200 miles chasing you. Ready to kill you on sight. What are we gonna do here? We're gonna wait and get rich. Seems like those sons of yours have been gone forever. Clock runs slowly. Chevis. Moment's here. Ben, it's no good. It's no good this waiting, hoping to find a plan. Now, you can't carry that to a brigade of rattlesnakes. You just blow their heads off. Haven't you forgotten the children? I wish that I could. Oh, but I. I tell you, I know these men. May heaven forgive me. I've defended them a hundred times in court. I tell you right now, you're never going to see those children alive again. Don't say that, Sam. Please. Tobias, face the truth. It'll be easier now than later. Ellie, stop moving. In the long summer pasture, we're on three forks. Yeah. Now oh, they're in the box canyon at the end of the draw. Did you see my daughter? Uh, and the others? Are they all right? We didn't see them. The prison wagon's down there, and there's that lion shack there. Hold up there. There's a pretty good spot there, in. Rock walls on either side and behind them. And a clear view straight down the valley. Why would he stop there? The others waited for me to make the next move. Well, now, then let's make it. Not us, Sam. Doyle said that he would see me when he was ready. I'm going to see him alone. Yeah, and when you fail to come back, I'll ride out with a posse and gun those butchers down. Right, right. This is Doyle. It's Doyle. Doyle out there. Fletcher, you just stay put. Doyle's come here to make a deal with me. And it's with me that he'll make it. Me alone. Do you understand? Now stay put. All of you. Just stay put. Where are the hostages? The rest of the boys are keeping them safe enough. So long as me and Zink stay that way. Pretty nice spread you got here, Ponderosa. It's a nice spread. That's no secret. And it's no secret that you and me, we think different, too. Like maybe you'd like to see that young fella back alive, huh? I'd rather have your money. What kind of money are we talking about? Well, I don't want to squeeze you too hard, Cartwright. And the others should be able to come up with something. 
Let's make it ten thousand a head. Forty thousand dollars. Well, that depends. Yeah? I want all four of them back here. Safe. That's what we're talking about. I'm not sure that's what you're thinking about. You'll have to trust me. Best I can do. All right. You get the money, and those four children will be back here unharmed. And we get 24 hours clear start. You know where we are. Be there by noon tomorrow with the money. Doyle. All of them. Sure, card, right? That wasn't very smart. Now it's going to cost you more. You only get three back when I get the money. The other one I'm keeping to make sure I get that 24-hour head start. You are a fool. A blind, ignorant fool. If I had the chance, I'd do it over again. And if your son hadn't stopped me, I would have gotten Doyle, too. How could he do a stupid thing like that? Thinking only of himself. Getting us all deep into trouble. And look what it's cost. They're going to keep one hostage. I only pray to heaven it's not Judas. Just the thought of it with those men. We just don't know which one they're going to keep. Mr. Fancher wanted a big posse. Don't you think he was right? No, I still think a big posse's wrong. Frontal attack, we might lose them all. The situation's changed. They don't trust us now. Well, we know they're camped. I think we ought to go in and get our children out. If we make one mistake or one sound, those men will... No. I say pay them. Well, I was quite prepared to do that until Doyle said he was going to keep one of them. I think we've got to take the fight to them. No, pay them. I want to see Judith back alive. I'm ready to pay my 10,000. Two to one against you. Chavez? I would pay, but my only fortune is my wife, my son. I have no money. That does present a problem. What problem? If they're only going to release three of them. Are you going to tell them which ones to release? Well, I didn't mean that. I'll guarantee Chavez end of the ransom. Come on, Brewer. Let's open up your bank. Mr. Carrot. Gracias. Muchas gracias. gone now, so don't you worry about it. That's easy to say. I will not let that man hurt you. What can you do? I can fight. I promise you, he will not touch you without a fight. You stay away from her. But why, Lester? What's wrong? Because you're my girl. That's why. I'm not. I... But it doesn't matter. I'm... Have you forgotten where we are? Just stay away from her, yeah. Oh, come on, this is ridiculous. How can we fight among ourselves when the real enemy's out there? That's right, and I, I'm scared of them. I have to believe someone will protect me from them. He's just as scared as we are. Stop it! What can you do anyway? You're just showing off. 
My father says courage is the best weapon. Four kids against those murderers? Your courage is going to kill us. We must not be stupid, I agree. But, but let me tell you about my father. Was your father held captive? Lester, father? let him tell the story. My father was with the Juaristas during the revolution. He was captured by the Federales. They put him in front of a firing squad. But my father was angry. He was angry because the Federalistas had killed his brother and his brother's wife. So he did not care what would happen to him. So when they put him in front of the firing squad, he refused to wear a blindfold and did not turn away from them. He shouted at them. Yeah, I know that feeling. Being too angry to be frightened. Yes. And the captain of the firing squad, knowing that my father was not frightened, said to him, I will not make it easy on you. I will not kill you right away. I will bring you out at dawn every day, and you will not know what day it is that the bullet will hit you. What's all this got to do with us? For three days, they brought my father out in front of the firing squad. And for three days, they did not shoot him. And on the fourth day, the Juaristas came and took the town and liberated him. Yeah, and that's what I believe, too. Mr. Carwright will save us. And my father, too. Right. Mine, too. All our fathers will try, but what can they do? A whole lot, Judith. Still, we must try to help ourselves. Ricardo's right. We just can't sit around and wait for help. Let's see what they're doing. Eating and drinking. Planning to stay a while. Wait a minute. Maybe after they go to sleep, we can get out the window. It's nailed shut. Yeah, well, even if we could get out the window, we'd be walking right into their campfire. And the guard by the door. If you listen, you can hear him. Yeah. They're going to have to be real careful. And when they do come, there's going to be shooting. We've got to expect that. But we've got to get out of here. What is that? I already looked in there. There's nothing in there. So did I, but where is that light coming from? together, so I think we should take a vote on it. I remember what Senor Doyle said in Virginia City. If a posse came, they might find us dead. I say we should dig. Me too. Me too. I can help. Good, we'll take turns digging. What about the dirt? Where can we hide it? We can put it in the trunk. And we can use the trunk to cover up the hole if the guys start to come in. I need more than just fingers. Seven cups. Lots of milk. We got some cool. Matthew, thank you. 
I am walking around because it's, it's hard to sit still. Yep. Guess that's why I make a sandwiches. Remember, I heard people talking about him when he was on trial. But Doyle, this is a name I never heard until today. It's a man with a long record, old man. Like the artist in the wagon. You want to go for a walk, pretty? with you yet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Just proves we all gotta stick together. Let's get back to work. Long way up there. Judy, we will help you. Come on. All right, come on, let's go.
<laughs> Why did it have to be Lester? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you wouldn't listen to me. I told you you'd never see those hostages alive again. You told us. You told us you had no right. Who was it? Who was it that pulled the trigger that actually killed Lester? You had no right! <laughs> you had no Brandy. right! Ben, why does he say that I had no right? She didn't have a chance to tell you. Emily is going to be all right. Emily's all right? I gave up hope. I thought that she was dead. I thought she was dead. That's why I did. Oh, Brewer. Brewer, what did I do? Oh, forgive me. I'm sorry. I, I was wrong. I was so wrong. Well, I was wrong, too. Out there at the prison wagon. I said they were bluffing. I said they wouldn't do anything. I guess I was wrong, too. Idea taking the sharps. Yeah, I figured that with its longer range, we might just possibly need it. Sure might. We'll give you a four hour start. That'll give you enough time to circle the flats and get across the plateau. Right. We'll be there. Thanks, right. Paul. Good luck. Yeah. To let Bruno and Sam go back to town, just the three of us. We'll make up. her so tight, it hurts her wrists. If someone is going to help us, it will have to be soon. guns. Get off your horses. Step down. You got the money in those saddlebags? I want to see the hostages. Still don't trust me, do you? No. Not much you can do about it. We could just shoot you and take the money. Doyle, we made a deal. Let me see him. Goldman, bring him out. Out. Bang! Hey! 
the money. Come over here. The other one. I believe you, Cartwright. I knew I could trust you, Cartwright. Send those kids down here. But you said you didn't trust me. You were right. Goldman! Put them back in the shack! <clears throat> Hurry it up! going to keep us healthy and safe until we get out of the country. And if I feel like it, I might send them back to you. I just knew it. I even told him so. Isn't she beautiful? Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> well, they finally got a mare this time. Father's got to see this. Yeah. Now, what is it that? The dog game. They got them all this time. Well, Locked up in state prison, safe and sound. Well, that's good news. Hey, Jamie. Look at this. Uh, I finally locked him up. Yeah, I finally did. You uh, going to ride out to West Coast with me? Oh, well, I hadn't planned to. I was uh, going to Virginia City to pick up my bridle. You know, the one that I was going to get the day we got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a good idea. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll, uh, I'll ride along with you. Paul. Jamie's been to Virginia City by himself lots of times. There's no more outlaws around here, you know. Oh, I, well, I'm not worried about Jamie. Just, just a nice day for a ride. Hmm. Sure good to hear a friendly voice. For a minute there, I thought everybody was deep. Or else I had a bad case of longevity. No, 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 we can hear you real good, Luke. Uh, I guess you boys ain't heard, huh? Oh, no, we heard, we heard. Them fellers really took you to the cleaning, huh? Took it all. Money, house, and everything. 
I guess them stocks and bonds are a little out of my territory. They sure did have it printed up on pretty paper. Anyway, I was out looking for a job when I run into you. Well, things can't be that bad. All I got left is $50 and my daughter Mina. You'd still have it all if you listen to me. That's what she said. Hello, Joe, Hoss. I Howdy, told you not to invest your money in that stock. That's exactly what she said. I told you the Fingo brothers were crooks. That's what she said. Hey, look, maybe you can tell us, where can we find Harvey Sprague? Oh, he's living with his son in Reno. Had a bad run of cars and lost everything he had. Hey, Luke, he, did, he didn't lose that little piece of land he had up in Pine Tree Canyon, did he? Lost it. Lost it all. But that wasn't no great loss. That land wasn't worth anything. Yeah, not unless you need it. Yeah. Well, you folks need it? Yeah, Paul needs it bad. Why? I sure hope he gets it. Hey, look, you don't, you don't know who, uh, who owns it now, do you, by any chance? Well, Joe, I reckon you find out at the land office. Yeah, good idea, Luke. I'll see you later. Bye, oh, Joe. Joe. Luke, if things get real bad and you can't find a job, come on out to the house. Paul's hiring. Thank you, Hoss. Bye, Hoss. Good day, Miss Mina. Why didn't you listen to me when I tried to warn you, Papa? I sure am glad you're smart, Mina. Well, I'm smart enough to tell you. You're not smart enough to listen. Well, at least you don't have to worry about anybody trying to marry on account of money now. <laughs> no, I never said that people were trying to marry you for the money. You were the one that said that. Yeah, but you never argued with me. Oh. Hello, horse. Ben, Joe. Oh, hey, Mina. Hello. Ah, Ben. See, Luke. Joe. Luke, what's your way? What's your horse? Ah, uh, Ben, could I, could I talk to you for a minute? Why, uh, sure. Uh, fellas, why don't you, why don't you help me off the wagon? That seat must be getting pretty hard. There is a mill. Well, what's in your mind? Uh, I guess you haven't heard. Yes, I did hear, Luke. You've been gambling again. Yeah. That's the reason why I'm here, looking for a job. Here? You want to work here? If you give me a job. Well, now, I don't know. No. I'll tell you what I do, Ben. I'll flip you. Heads, you give me a job, tell you don't. No, we got a cook, we got a man. But for Ben, the I don't want no sissy job. You know, I'm pretty good at riding it. I ain't bad at roping. Heads. All right. All right, you got yourself a job. Now, uh, Ben, just one problem. Mina. Oh, well, she'll stay on as our guest. Uh, ben, I don't know how long it'll be. Oh, well, that's no problem. We have plenty of room. Ben, I want to thank you. You're a real friend, a real honest to goodness, tried and good friend. And you won't be sorry one minute. Believe me. I believe you. Dusty Road. Luke Calhoun. Ben told me about hiring you. If there's anything you want to know or you got any problems, you just come to me. We turn the lamps down at 10 o'clock, so if you got anything to do, do it before then. playing in the bunkhouse, okay? Okay. Boss. Luke. Haven't met you, Luke. That's not here. 
You got any special color you like? Um, black. I better warn you, I'm pretty good at this game. Well, I ain't so bad myself. Well, you probably ain't good as I am. So if you're feeling hurt easy, don't play me. Go ahead. Move. How about 50 cents game? You know, kind of make it interesting. Mm, well, I... Of course, if you ain't sure. Let's make it a dollar a game. What's your first name? Dave. Go ahead. Jump. <laughs> Go again. <clears throat> no, don't take me but five games to learn my lesson. Hey, you boys else feel lucky? Hey, maybe Pete might. Hey, Pete. Yeah. Got a man over here who likes to play checkers for a dollar a game? Yeah. Well, how about that? What's your first name? Pete. Yours? Luke. Howdy, Luke. Howdy. You got a special color? Oh, black's fine. Would you care to make another little bet on the side? Hold him, hold him there. How about the rest of you boys? Oh, boy. Sucker money. Your move. It wasn't just the stock deal, Mr. Cartwright. Papa was into everything. He got gambling fever. Pharaoh, roulette, three-card Monty. How long it took a drop of water to run down a pane of glass? Why, well, he'd bet on anything. One afternoon, Papa and Harvey Sprague sat on the porch for three hours, betting on who could spit the furthest. <laughs> well, I know Harvey's a gambling fool. He spits pretty good, too. Well, did you try to stop him? I mean, from gambling? Well, when it was just gambling, I didn't mind. You know, it was his money. He found that mine. Worked it by himself all those years. And if he wanted to gamble, it was his business. Besides, he usually won. But when the Fenco brothers started selling him stock, I tried to stop him. But it was too late. Well, Mina, wasn't part of that money yours? Not really. Papa raised me, loved me, taught me the difference between right and wrong and how to take care of myself. I figured he gave me what he owed me. The money belonged to him. You're a very unusual girl. Other people have said the same thing. Oh, it's a compliment. Not the way they say it. Hey, Pa, you about ready to go over those books? Oh, yeah, I guess you better. Oh, uh, would you show me the line? Yes, sir. Me and watch your step. Why? Because she wants to get married, that's why. Joseph, everybody wants to marry somebody. She doesn't want to marry somebody. She wants to marry anybody. Watch your step. Nice night, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's a beautiful night. Would you like to take a walk? I'd love to, Oz. Oz? Watch your step. It's dark out there. I can look out after myself, little brother. I reckon he thinks I'm going to step in a hole or something. Well, that's not what he meant. He meant for you to watch your step with me. Oh, no, ma'am. I don't, I don't oh, that. Don't try and cover up, Hoss. It doesn't matter. I make a lot of mistakes. Well, ma'am, we... We all make mistakes. Yes, but most of mine are about men. 
Being raised all alone out there in that desert, just pop and me. All I knew about men was what I got out of books. And in the books, people meet, fall in love, and get married, just like that. Doesn't take more than just a few pages sometimes. But it just doesn't happen like that in real life. I mean, you can meet somebody and then meet somebody else. And then you can meet somebody else and somebody else and you haven't gotten married. And time just keeps passing and I get the feeling that I'm never going to get married. Yeah. Well, Ma'am, do you fall in love with all of them? No. But I'm not as lonely when they're around and that's got to count for something. Yeah, I reckon that's that. Hoss. Why do men think that falling in love is like falling into some kind of a trap? That getting married is like being locked up in a cell? Well, I reckon married men can't do everything they'd like to do. A single man can't do everything he'd like to either. Well, that's sort of like locking himself up in his own cell, ain't it? Well, if I've got to be locked up, I'd rather be locked up with somebody. Been all by myself. Yeah. What's more, dumb and nothing? I think I learned my lesson. What about the rest of you fellas? What about two at a time? Three at a time. All the time. And if you lose one, you lose them all? Well, I don't know about that. Wait a minute. Okay, if I lose one, I lose them all. Double or nothing. Dave, Smokey, Ray, play the other game. There's something wrong? Something unfinished. Carter, huh? We can't haul those logs across the top of that mountain. The only way we can get them to the mill is across his land. Well, why don't I ride over to Carson tomorrow and check around, then Hoss can cover Gold Hill. From what we know about Carter, he'll probably stop the first deck of cards he gets to. Then let's try anything. We've got to pay that tip of Coover that they work or not. I just wonder if he doesn't want to sell the land. Now, what reason would he have to keep it? That 30 acres is the worst piece of land in the whole country. The only use anybody could make of it is to get across it to someplace else. Who would want that? Us. We'll, uh, we'll go first thing in the morning. Dusty gave me the day off today, and I'd kind of like to spend it in town. But I'm kind of broke. Sorry. 
I make it practice never lend money. You just lose friends. But I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a chance to win some of it back. Yeah, but... I know you're broke. But I still want to give you a chance to win some of your money back. Your time is worth money. You probably make about two dollars a day. So if you want to bet two dollars, you got to bet at the end of your time. Bet on what? How you spit? About the same as everybody else. I just pucker up and push. You good at it? About average. Well, you probably ain't old enough yet. You know something? Some men got spitting down to a fine art. They skeet it. How about chucking pennies to a crack in the floor? Throws a pen and wins. Tossing pennies at a crack? Well, I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. You can chuck a face a crack, and I'll turn my back around and chuck them on my shoulder. That's like stealing money. Yeah, but it was your money to begin with. I'll bet you one day of my time against two dollars. It's a bet. Can I get a bet like that, too? I don't know about that. You've got some of our money, too, you know. I guess you're right. Oh, boy. Soccer money. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Mina. Good morning. My name's... Dave Torrance. I know. How's that? I asked. Oh? I asked about all the fellas in the bunkhouse. Well, I... I didn't know you'd ever noticed me before. <laughs> it never hurts a girl to know all she can about eligible suitors, just in case one of them should become one of them. Oh, well, that wasn't exactly what I had in mind. Well, you must have had something in mind. I mean, you've been hanging around out here for 15 minutes waiting for me to come out. Yeah, well, I guess that's right. Uh, you see, uh, I was thinking, uh, well, I thought that maybe, uh, maybe, uh, would you like to go out with me? No. That's great. I'm helping Hop sing this morning. I'd be happy to some other time. Oh? Well, I, I wasn't exactly thinking about this morning. Well, when did you have in mind? Oh, I, I don't know. Any time. Maybe a Fourth July picnic. The Fourth of July was two weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Well, another one will come around again next year. <laughs> how much do you owe him? What? My, oh, who? My papa, how much? Four dollars and a half. But how'd you know? Well, you weren't very eager. It figured. I'm awful ashamed, Miss Mina. There's no need to be. Well, there sure is. After the matches and the checkers and the broom, I should have known he could pitch them pennies over his shoulder and hit that crack every time. Yes, you should. Thanks for asking me anyway. But I feel terrible about that, too. Well, you shouldn't. In a way, you are quite flattering. Is that so? The last fellow my papa told to ask me for a date only owed him a dollar and six bits. Look, Miss Mina, if I pay your pa back next payday, could I ask you for a date again? Of course, Dave. How about next 4th of July? And she went to put salt on the loss of beef. Mina. Oh, good morning, Mr. Cartwright. Good morning, Mina. Uh... Hop Singh is a little upset. Oh, really? Then maybe he should lie down and get some rest. I'll take care of things here. No, you don't understand. You see, Hop Singh is upset because you are taking care of things here. You're taking care of the things which he thinks he ought to be taking oh, care of. Oh, I just felt that I ought to be doing something. And there's not much on a ranch that a woman can do except cook. Oh, Hop Singh is the cook. I know. I just wanted help. <laughs> you helping Hop Singh right out of kitchen. Oh, I did was put a little salt on the roast beef. Hop Singh don't need no help. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute now. Now, you're the one who's always complaining about needing help, Hop Singh. 
at least three times a day, once at every meal. Hop Singh needs help in kitchen, right? Help is somebody who do what Hop Singh say, not somebody who tell Hop Singh what to do. Need help, not boss. All I did was put a little salt on the roast beef. Hop Singh know how to chop the onion. Hop Singh know when to put the salt on the meat. Hop Singh is boss in this kitchen. Right? Okay. Hop Singh is the boss. I'll just do what he tells me. <sighs> okay. room been straight now? No, but it's getting there. Has it been inventory? Inventory? No, but it's getting there. Oh, good morning, Mr. Cartwright. I thought you had the day off. And I thought you were supposed to be cleaning up the pack room. Oh, that's right, Ben, but you see, Pete owed me a day of his time. You paid him for a day of his time? No, I won it. Now, Louis, you know very well there's a rule, a strict rule about playing poker in the bunkhouse. We weren't playing poker, Ben. We were chunking pennies to a crack in the floor. But it, it comes to the same thing. You better get back to work. Luke, I want to talk to you. Now, Luke, you know, we have very strict rules on this ranch about gambling. But I'm not going to fire you. And you know why? Because we're friends. No! Because if I fire you, I've got to fire Pete. And Pete is a top hand. I don't want to lose him. If you want to gamble, do it in town. OK, boss. Can I help you? Oh. I'm looking for a Mr. Calhoun. A Luke Calhoun. Right over here, Garvey. If you looked around, you could have seen me. Come on, we'll go talk to Bond. I'm Ralph Garvey. Oh, Ben Cartwright. Come on, Garvey. I'm not sure I like this, Mr. Calhoun. Deception, subterfuge, working behind people's backs, flying false colors. Well, that ought not to bother you. You're a lawyer, ain't you? Pete! You don't mind, do you? Come on. Excuse us, Ben. from a cow. Well, it's been in a can, hanging in the spring, so it's nice and cool. Well, when you've had as much to do with cows as I have. It's good for you. I'm sorry Papa got you into this. 
No, it wasn't all his fault. Nobody forced me to make that bet. I know. And I think you got what was coming to you. A man who gambles gets just what he deserves. I wonder what Luke ever did to deserve a daughter as pretty as you. <laughs> well, I've got certain drawbacks, too. I never noticed any. Why, Pete, I didn't think you'd ever noticed me at all. Oh, yeah, I noticed you, all right. Why, every day I went to town, I used to sit out in front of the hotel. And I used to watch you walk to the store. Well, why didn't you say something? Why didn't you come to call? You had too much money. Well, I don't have any money now. I know. And I was wondering, maybe we could take a buggy ride down by the river? Have a picnic. And we could talk. Get to know each other a little better. How about next Sunday? I can't. Well, how about the next Sunday? No, Pete, not the next Sunday, not any Sunday. I was just beginning to think that you like me. I do. It's just that I wouldn't want to get to like you too much. Why? Because I don't have any money. Well, that don't make no sense at all. Yes, it does. I'm thinking about Papa. He's getting kind of old, and when he can't work anymore, I'm going to have to take care of him, and that takes money. Are you going to get a job? Oh, well, either that or marry somebody with money. <laughs> 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 well, I don't know if I'll ever be rich. But I'm not the type of man who'd let his father-in-law starve to death, either. Why, that's almost a proposal. Well, al almost, but not quite. Oh. I don't know you well enough to propose to you. That's right. And I don't know you well enough to say yes. You think those people in Gold Hill knew what they were talking about? It sure sounded like Paul. I said that's all Carter was talking about, bragging about all the money he's going to make on that land deal. I sure hope little Joe has more luck in Carson City. Oh, oh that was a very good roast beef, I'm saying. Yeah, sure was, as usual. Needs a little more salt, though. Need the more salt. Come on, Hill. Long story. <clears throat> I think I'll take a walk. Hmm. Wait a minute, Mina. I'll go with you. It's dark out there. You'll have to step a hole or something. Somebody else wants to buy it. Somebody else wants to buy it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who'd want it? I mean, it's been prospected. There's no gold. Trees have been cut down. There's no lumber. There's no, there's no grass. There's no water. Who'd want it? Well, somebody does. He wants to wait and see who's going to bid the most for it. Well. <laughs> look, look, ride back tomorrow. Tell Carter that we'll pay him $500 more and the other party would bid for them. That's what the other party said. Said what? They'd pay him $500 more than you'd bid for it. Oh. And somebody knows about the lumber contract. Mm -hmm. So we either pay him his price or pay off the mill for not being able to deliver the lumber. I think I'll ride into Carson City myself and talk to Mr. Carter. No need. He'll be here tomorrow. It's kind of anxious to see how high the bidding's going to go. No bid is. It's beautiful. The sky? Everything. The sky, the night, the ponderosa. It must be nice to live here all the time. Feel so safe. Well, we have a few little problems every now and then. <laughs> all that land, all those cattle. What kind of problems could you possibly have? Well, money, for example. Oh, Hoss. Well, ma'am, you, you can't spend land. And we got to drive the cattle to market. Well, if you need money, you can always sell some of the land. Well, but then it wouldn't belong to you anymore, would it? I mean, somebody else to have it. Then you can borrow on it. Well, but you got to pay that money back, plus interest. Well, at least you own all this land. Well, not necessarily, ma'am. I mean, did, 
Do you ever think about it? I mean, do you believe that anybody ever really owns a mountain or a valley or owns a lake? I don't think so. I think that they're just sort of loaned to us for a while and putting our trust for us to keep and use. And then we pass them on to somebody else, and they sort of keep them in trust and use them for a while, and then they pass them on. You see, them mountains and lakes and them valleys was here a long time before we got here. And they're going to be here a long time after we're gone. And just who are you going to be passing it on to? Well, I've given that some thought. Uh, haven't you made up your mind yet? Well, I've, I've made up my mind as to how. I just ain't made up my mind as to who. <laughs> but then when a man's out here in a place this pretty with a pretty gal like you, oh. sometimes his mind can just sort of make itself up. <laughs> hey, Hoss. Hey, you ready to ride on a Samina Canyon? Well, I was fearing on doing that in the morning, Joe. Oh, no, no, we'll get an early start, and right the first thing in the morning, we'll be on a roundup. Yeah, but, Joe... I'll get your horse. Joe! Uh, da, da, da. Well, let's see. Uh, where was we? We were talking hey, about... Hey, better give me a hand with your saddle. In a minute, Joseph! Uh, what was I saying, then? Uh, you were talking about your mom. Hey, what'd you do with the blanket? You know, your, the big horse blanket? Well... I guess you'd better go help him. We'll talk about it some other time. Yes, some good night. Nice night. Yeah. What? Sports in it. I try to work for a little game. Nobody wants to play. Luke, new rule, remember? No gambling. Well, Joe, it ain't exactly gambling. It's a little game. Put a hat down here. Take a step over here. Turn around. I'll give a man ten cottages. Cottages? Bullets. Oh. And I'm willing to bet he can't chuck them cottages without getting one of them in a hat. That's gambling. It ain't gambling. That doesn't a man can't miss. Well, that's what I say. But nobody's fool enough to take me up. Look here. Who gets to throw the, card, the bullets? A horse. Well, you... you always... It don't make a dip. You can chuck me yourself if you want to. Mm -hmm. Any particular way? Any way you want to chuck them, horse. All, all at one time, over his shoulder, chuck them over your back. Don't make no dip to me. Chuck them any way you want to. And you're willing to bet that at least one of them cut bullets will go into the hat, right? Of course, you remember what Pa said? Joe, wait a How much? How about ten dollars? How about fifty? Oh, come on. This is ridiculous. Joseph, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Huh? That's a lot of money, horse. Put up a shot. It's a bed. I'll go get the cottages. Now, Joseph, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to teach him a lesson once and for all. You don't mind, dear Pete. Now, let me get this right, Luke. I stand right here on this line, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Here's your cottages. All right. Now, that's the hat. And it don't make no difference how I throw these bullets, right? That's right. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Shut it. Oh, 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 no. oh, oh, Sucker. Oh, oh, oh. Pay me. Uh, excuse me, just a minute, horse. Come see me. Honest game for honest people. Sporty game for sporty people. What's going on? 
Luke came back here and told him Hoss could stand one pace away from the hat, throw the bullets, and not a one of them would go in the hat. Every man here figured at that distance Hoss was bound to get one bullet in the hat. They're willing to bet on it. Dusty, what did Pa say about gambling? Well, yeah, but when they heard that Hoss was in on it, we figured it was all right. Hoss! Hey, Hoss. Sure do appreciate it. Really showed him, didn't you? Hmm? Taught him, taught him a lesson he won't forget, huh? Listen, Joe, I, I feel bad enough about this like it is. And I'd appreciate it if, if you let me be the one to tell Paul about it. I'd appreciate it if you would tell me when you get ready to tell Pa so I can be ten miles away when you do. you to ride in the Ponderosa, because I think Pa's going to fire you. What for? Gam. Oh, Joe, you don't call that gam. That's a little game. First thing in the morning, Luke. OK, Joe, what do you say? Missy Mina out in bout milking the cow. How about fixing old Luke up a little breakfast? You want breakfast, you'll be here when breakfast ready. When is that? Three hours ago. Tell you what, Hop Singh. You pick out a card, if I can tell you what it is, you gotta cook me steak, eggs, with chili peppers. And if I can't tell you what it is, you get that fat $10. And no breakfast. And no breakfast. You turn around. Turn around. You got a four. Is Ben Cartwright here? Mr. Cartwright out. He come back by and by. You like to wait? Don't mind if I do. Calhoun. Moment, Carter. Mind if I sit down? No mind if you do. Back the side of you brightens my day. How's your luck? Oh, no luck to it. It's all a matter of skill. Feel like testing out that skill? Well, I don't consider you a fair test of my gambling ability. I've seen you play. Oh, I saw you skin those Tin Horn Fenkel brothers down at the saloon, but uh, they were lousy poker players. And you prepared them? That's how I make my living. Up, Singh. Yes, sir. You might clean up this mess. Cut your high card for a dollar. I didn't come here to gamble, Mr. Calhoun. You don't call a dollar gambling, do you? Double or nothing.
Twenty dollars this time. No, like I said, uh, I really didn't come here to gamble. You bound to win this time. Oh, it's in your favor. My deck? As long as seals ain't broken. One hand of showdown for a hundred dollars. Your deal, Mr. Carter. New game, Mr. Calhoun. A little three-card Monty. I don't think I ever heard of it. It's very simple. Two red kings and an ace. Find the ace. you about gambling in this place? In the bunkhouse, Ben. This ain't the bunkhouse. Uh, ben, you know Mr. Carter? Mr. Cartwright. Carter? You're the fellow I've been looking for all over this country. We got a lot of talking to do, Mr. Carter. Uh, not just yet, please. Think you can find it again? Now, Luke, I will not have you turning this place into a gambling hall. That's right, Ben. You're right. And this absolute and last time, my word of honor. Luke? Ben! I know where that ace is. I can't lose. Well, I think I know where that ace is, too. Then why don't you pick for him? Not until you match that. Papa! You stay out of this, Mina. Sorry, ain't enough. This is the deed to that land I won from Harvey Sprague. I was offered $3,500 for it by a Mr. Greavy. The name is Garvey. Mr. Garvey worked for me, and I'm the man who made the offer. It's $2,500. Hold on just a minute now, look. You the fellow's been bidding against me? That's right, Ben. How could you, Papa? Nina, I'll tell you all about this a little later, just as soon as I pick this ace. And you, too, if you want to, Ben. You bet I want to. I want to hear all about it. it ought to be very interesting. I'll offer you $3,000 for this deed. I'm sorry, Ben, but it's already in the pot. Don't worry, Mr. Cartwright. Odds are we can't pick it this time. All right, Ben. You picked the ace. You don't mind, do you, Mr. Carter? Oh, that ain't it, Ben. Are you sure, Mr. Cartwright? Well, it has to be. The other two are kings. Uh, uh. Well, easy come, easy go, ma'am. Gentlemen. Now. That land. It ain't for sale, Ben. It's a present for a friend. Yeah. When did it? Didn't really cost me anything. Hold on a minute now, Luke. You mean to tell me you were bidding against me so you could buy it, so you could give it to me? That's right, Ben. You need it, don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I needed it. Well, I'll, I'll pay the 3000 for it. I heard about you losing all your money. Well, it wasn't exactly that way, Ben. And Finko boys, they took everything away from me for fifty dollars. And then they got greedy and wanted the fifty dollars too. So we got the little card game in the back room of the saloon, and I won back everything they took away from me, plus everything they had. Papa, I don't want you to tell anybody about that money until I say so. Understand? Honey, I ain't gonna say one word to anybody till you got that boy firmly hooked. I think I'll take a ride up Seminole Canyon, see how the roundup's going. <laughs> 
Mr. Swagger, you know. <laughs> well, I, I thank you, Luke. I, I really do. Can't tell you how much I appreciate this. Oh, and by the way, you're fired. Ben, you're the one who picked Ace. I wasn't gambling. Yeah, that's right. You wasn't gambling, was you? You didn't happen to nothing to win or lose, did you? I sure didn't figure that one for the ace. It wasn't. If that there's a king, and them there two kings, where's the ace? Probably right up Mr. Carter's sleeve, as if you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs>